What do you think, um, number one, actually happened here? Why do you think that they've had to shut down? Well, anytime you place risk um, on a chance of having a return, it's gambling. Uh, gambling has three elements. It's uh, risking anything for a chance to win. Here, that's what was happening. Uh, the UIGEA, the Unlawful Internet Gambling Act, mm -hmm. uh, prohibits anyone from betting anything on the outcome of an event or contest. And mm -hmm. that's what this is. Only stocks are actually ex uh, exempted. You know, Matt, let me ask you, do you think that uh, we're going too far by trying to outlaw something like id trade? I mean, doesn't it serve some purpose? Well, I mean, at any, at the purpose that it has served is the whole idea of wisdom of crowds. It's the idea instead of going to one or two experts, you have a broad part of society that can then weigh in on something and it gives you some sense of where things might be going or what's the sentiment surrounding mm -hmm. big events whether it's a presidential election the Oscars or whatever happens to be the worry is is if somebody games the system manipulates the system so that many people many people like us media and all that that watch these things as if it's a telling sign it then becomes manipulated by people that are playing the system in order to show a certain result in that one of the things that these things that so the benefit of is wisdom of the crowds the downside is is it takes away from some of the other more accurate polling data out there that really okay. tells us what's well, going well, why on why not actually just create a better regulation around the site why not say okay we're, we're going to sanction this we're going to regulate it and people can bet on everything from the pope to the oscars to the presidents of the united states Matt. I'm a thousand percent. I'm a thousand percent for that idea. If it's a regulated system where people can't game the system, to me, there's no reason why that you couldn't shouldn't be able to bet on the Oscars or bet on the presidential race, just like you'd bet on who's going to win the Super Bowl or who's going to win, you know, the World Series. I see no reason for that as long as it's regulated and as long as the system can't be gamed. Corey, so, Corey, effectively, yeah. is this is this a market like an options exchange? Would you say this is another version, perhaps less sophisticated because it doesn't have all the regulation of what we? do every day? Yes. Uh, regulation maintains the integrity of the uh, gambling environment. Clearly, regulations that are put in place preserves the positive perception among the public that participates. All that is good. Uh, with technological advances, this is, seems to be a social activity that people enjoy. And as a result, we should be able to uh, let people know that the games are fair and that people that are participating have a chance to win and that the games are regulated and there's no collusion. And so, yes, this should be uh, sort of the way that we're advancing. Here in Illinois, actually, where I am now, uh, we have a bill which would allow for Internet gambling and wagering. So it seems to be the trend as more and more jurisdictions are looking to raise revenue. They're going to look towards other types of social taxes. Uh, that they can't impose on everyone. So this is a voluntary tax if you want to gamble, and if you're going to gamble online, well, Corey, uh, there ought to be regulation. Help us understand why it is that all of a sudden in trade suddenly shuts down. I mean, it's not like a surprise. People have been going to in trade and betting for years. Why all of a sudden today do they decide to pull the plug? Well, I don't have the answer as to why. I, it, it may be that after careful scrutiny, they realized that they were accepting uh, wagers on an event or a contest. And of that's course they do. That's, I mean, that's what law. they do. They, I mean, that's what they do, right, Matt? It's like, you know, I'm shocked there's gambling yeah. going on in this. Yes, it's a site for yeah, gambling. Is, so what's wrong with yeah, that? This is yeah, this is like Casablanca, obviously, as you referenced that line from. To me, is, is I think there's something more to it. It wasn't that they discovered that there was betting on an event. I think probably, and I don't know this for sure, what probably happened, which is what a lot of us had a suspicion, that certain people and certain groups were gaming the system. They were gaming it during the presidential contest, and they may have been gaming it during the Oscars yeah, or whatever. But they and, may have been gaming it, and they haven't been successful, Matt, because in trade typically gets it right. Well, it's, it's hard not to, it was hard in my view. I mean, all of us, and as you know, before the election, I had speculated that I thought Obama was going to win and he was going to win this many electoral votes and came pretty dang close to that. And it, just like Nate Silver did with the New York Times, and that isn't hard to do if you take a look at the sum total of all the public opinion data. I think people worried is that because reporters and many people followed the in-trade that they thought it was pure. Yeah. And I think as it turns and, and out, it not, wasn't no. pure. Uh, let me bring in uh, right now Nelson Rose, senior professor at UCLA's uh, Whittier Law School. He's also the author of uh, Gambling and the Law. He joins us right now on the phone. Professor Rose, welcome. Uh, we've been talking about what may have happened there at Intrade. Why do you think it's suddenly been shut down? Well, that's a, it is a good question. I, I think one thing that has to be remembered 
in terms of gaming the system. This is uh, designed to attract insiders. We want inside trading ah. because we want people who have extra information to get a little greedy and decide they can make some money on it and then tell us about, uh, you know, make, it helps the prediction markets be accurate. And they're tremendously accurate. But there seems to be something a little distasteful about the idea that um, insiders would be using their inside information to make money. Well, why shouldn't it just be regulated? I mean, you heard what Matt said. Uh, actually, Matt, before I ask about regulation, why don't you just respond to what the professor's saying? Well, I mean, obviously you have insiders and the people that have inside people that are insiders like me and other people look at polling data. It's not like we have special information. We just sort of look at the data and look where it is. I think the problem is, and this happens a lot in campaigns and in other things, even the Oscars, is that people use this and then they say, oh, this is happening there. And then they, they use that as energy or, or as, as a point at which to report on something else. And I think that's the problem. If it's not pure, it's not regulated, and it's getting gamed by people but that why even would they if they do don't that? believe. You're, I guess you're going to lose money, but you're going to influence an outcome. Is that the? Uh, well, here, I, this is why they would. This is why they would do it. They would say, let's say they pushed and a bunch of people bet on Mitt Romney. The press would look at it and say, wow, the in-trade numbers are changing. Maybe the Romney campaign has momentum. And then they cover it based upon a false assumption that Romney has momentum based upon in-trade data that somebody yeah. gained. See, that's, that's a very good problem. point. You're, it's almost like you're talking about the pink sheets or something. I mean, if you think about a very thinly traded stock professor, uh, an investor can have a huge uh, influence over one of these very thinly traded stocks uh, by putting certain information out because it's really not a big enough marketplace. I think what Matt's getting at is this can be too easily rigged. Do you think that the in-trade uh, can be too e easily rigged? Well, I think there's a very big difference between the Oscars and a presidential race. In Nevada, the sports books cannot take bets anymore on activities like the Oscars because they finally figured out, gee, somebody puts that name in the envelope. So you have real inside information. In other words, we know who the winner is going to be. With the presidential race, um, yeah, anybody who looked at the polls, uh, other than true believers, would say Obama's going to win. And if, if in trade, sure, it's a thin enough market that it could have been gained and it wouldn't have made any difference whatsoever. Okay. Uh, remember all of the Republican pundits who were saying, we don't care what Nate Silver mm -hmm. is saying, uh, they're uh, over polling the Democrats. They're not asking enough Republicans. Yeah. Well, I, I know a no. lot of people will be disappointed uh, that in trade's down right now because uh, a lot of predictions about Pope. All right, thanks so much to the whole panel, Matt, Corey, and also Professor Rose.